Hello, and welcome to the Monster Painter. This week, I am going to take some Skylander toys and turn them into tabletop terrain. All right then, what kind of Skylander toys can we get at the thrift store for a mere eight Canadian dollars? Once I get this bag open, we're going to have an excellent illustration of the primary problems with using Skylander toys in tabletop gaming. First of all, they're too big to be used for anything but marquee monsters, and unfortunately, they're nearly always too cutesy to be a marquee monster in a game. And uh, just as often, I don't even understand what the model is. Is this thing supposed to be a dragon turtle body surfing on a tornado? I don't know. I don't care. I'm not using him. We're not going to see any more of this weirdo. Now, the other two models have plenty of potential for tabletop gaming. Let's see what can be done with them. Now, the Skylander franchise has produced a tremendous amount of stuff over the last 11 years, some of which can hit the tabletop straight without any work, like these power core things. I purchased them a long time ago at a thrift store well before I had a YouTube channel, and they are really, really cool and versatile. Perfect for sci-fi, but also suitable for an evil wizard's workshop. The subject of today's video are a little on the large side, but they're still suitable for a high fantasy themed 28mm tabletop game. However, I feel like they require a bit of work in order to really sell them as tabletop terrain. So these toys already have a paint job on them and you could probably get away with directly putting your new paint job over top, but uh, I'm going to be using some of this clear gesso as a primer. It will help make it will help the paint really stick to the model as well as provide a nice toothy surface for the paint to adhere to. Uh, when you use this, you've got to keep a couple of things in mind. It does not adhere as well as regular gesso, although it is going to work really, really well on this project. Some surfaces do give it problems. The other thing to keep in mind is that uh, while it does dry clear, it tends to dull the color underneath and if you apply it too thickly, it will dry cloudy. With these things in mind, you can avoid any trouble that uh, clear acrylic gesso might give you. So, the single most important step in this project is to paint the blue transparent band along the base a dark grey so it conforms with the rest of the base. The trick to using toys as tabletop terrain is to eliminate the toyish look of the model. Covering up these blue parts covers up the part of the model that is most clearly and easily identifiable as Skylander. And it's the bare minimum required to convert this toy into a piece of terrain, and it is absolutely the most crucial step. With that done, most of the rest of the project is just styling up the existing paint jobs. The better the paint job looks, the more convincing this is going to be as a piece of tabletop terrain. I'm going to dry brush on some bronze yellow, a warm brown color, onto all the wooden parts of the model. This will help bring out the textures that are present and help brighten up the thing, which has a darker look than I like. Skylanders is a very successful video game toy franchise and since its launch way back in 2011 they have sold billions of dollars worth of these toys so there are lots of them out there a few of them are truly worth the hunt so get looking the next step is to add some metallic gray to the metallic parts of the model for this I will be dry brushing on a mixture of pearl white and Mars black. It will help bring out the details and make the metal parts look more metal. Um, so these Skylander toys all contain a chip inside of them and uh, when you're playing the video game you can use a doodad called a portal of power that reads the uh, tag in the figure and imports the character or object into the game. It's a rather brilliant merger of video games, children's toys, and collectible figurines. And it is no wonder that they made such a big pile of tasty, tasty money with this prod product. 
I will be porting these things into my games of Frostgrave, and they're going to be perfect for some specialized terrain that I'm going to need. All right, now we're going to take on the molten metal pouring out of the cauldron. As it stands, the one tone of yellow looks more like oatmeal than metal melted iron. So uh, I'm going to add some very bright orange, pyrrole orange to be exact, to the outside edges of this section. I'll be careful to maintain the original yellow along the center of the stream. This, in combination with the deeper red of the transparent plastic, should all come together to create an altogether more convincing molten flow. And this will really spark up and sell the model. Now back to the big crystal. I am a little tempted to cover it in matte medium and style it up with some washes. The danger is covering clear plastics that are not intended to be painted with matte medium can result in a sticky tacky finish and I don't want that. Instead I'm just going to use my utility knife to trim off the one little bump on the thing and call this part complete. On to the penultimate step in this project. I will dry brush a light gray, a mixture of Payne's gray and unbleached titanium, onto the bases of the models. This will bring out the stone texture and help make these toys look more like convincing pieces of tabletop terrain. And here are the final products. They look pretty good and are now reasonably convincing bits of terrain. They do have a lot of flavor and character and are not going to be suitable as generic terrain, however. So what possible use can they be put to? Well, as it turns out, the latest Frostgrave supplement, Fireheart, includes new rules for interactive terrain, for more fun and danger in the old city of Felstad. Our crystal would be perfect as a creature magnet, and the forge would make an ideal flame column. It really nails the description in the book. The crystal would also make a good uh, mind wiper. So I can see myself getting plenty of use out of these old converted Skylander toys. For sure. All right, boys, get him! Kill the Yumi! Kill the Yumi! Kill the Yumi! Zoosh! Uh, what were we doing? I don't remember. I think we were going to kill something. I don't know. And here are our converted Skylander toys, providing extra danger and extra excitement in the old city of Felstad. And now for this week's monster fight, featuring a particularly large and menacing Scarecrow, and his dangerous and smelly opponent, a slightly small but very vicious river troll. Who will win? Let's find out. Here we go, and it's not even close. This time we have a clear winner. The victor is the great big scarecrow. Congratulations, big fellow. You've just won a huge sack of candy corn. Next week on The Monster Painter, I'm going to take a look at Renedra's three outbuilding kits. Remember to like. Comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring the bell. Painter.